Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn all about flattening. We can take our markups and essentially attach them to our page, just like any kinds of assets such as lines or text created in programs like AutoCAD, Revit, and programs that deal with DWGs and other file formats. We can even take assets from programs like Microsoft Word and Excel and also convert them into a PDF and either have them flattened or interactive things that we can modify. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some of our markups and mimic the data that we have on our screen that can't really be clicked. You can see that if I try to select something, nothing happens. Double clicking does bring up this pretty little zoom icon that allows us to temporarily basically click and hold and then drag basically up and down in order to zoom in and out without a mouse wheel. Quite useful. So let's now flatten some markups. What I'm gonna do now is show you guys what's called quick flattening. What we can do is select any markup, right click on top of it, and you'll see that the flatten icon is available. This is only available for local files. For files that are in Studio, you're not really able to flatten things. So flatten your assets before you go into Studio if you don't want people to modify them once you upload the file there. Now, I can flatten, and if I do this, I have to be very careful. The markup can't be clicked on anymore. It's now a part of the PDF and part of a drawing, just like we can see with the doors, windows, and walls, and other assets that came from those other programs. Now, if I save my drawing, and if I close out of the program and open the file again, this markup is flattened forever. There's no way to unflatten it. And so I'm just going to press the undo key. And now, let me do that one more time. A couple more times. There we go. And now the markup is back to normal. Now I'm going to demonstrate what the flattened dialog is and how we can allow for markup recovery, which is also known as unflattening. Now, if we want to flatten multiple markups, we have many different ways of doing it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and use the Select tool down here, and then I'm going to select a good portion of these markups right here. If you start from the right side, it's a crossing selection, so I don't have to fully encompass the markups inside of my selection box. If I started from the left, by the way, I would have to fully have them inside in order for them to be selected. Hence, I only got these up here. Anyway, I'm just going to take this nice little group of markups right up here. I'm going to right click on top of one of them and I could flatten them or I can use the flatten shortcut which is typically found at the top of our screens if we're using the review advanced profile or your own profile that was a copy of review advanced that's a great way to get it or you can also go to the document drop down and flatten is always going to be here along with unflatten and what you can do is add unflattening as a shortcut to your screen if you want to quickly unflatten markups in your document and you don't have to go to the drop down every single time to do that, we can use this pin icon right here, or we can go to Tools, Toolbars, and then Customize and do it that way. Anyway, let's click on the Flatten button right here. And now this Flatten dialog appears right here. This dialog is really nice because we can now choose groups of markups to flatten. Before we do that, if we start from the top, we can see that we can add different kinds of files to this. So we can flatten markups on multiple files all at once. If you have to submit many pages to a municipality and they require you to have separate PDFs for each page, then you can add all of those files within a folder right here and flatten them very quickly. You can also choose which pages you want to flatten just by clicking once in this box and typing your pages such as one to three, for example. So I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Uh, when you're done typing in your text, make sure to just press enter, of course. And now the input has been given to the program. So you always want to make, be sure to do that before you continue. Now we can see these categories here. So I can choose to flatten basically nothing, which doesn't really make any sense, or I can choose the category. So if I just want to flatten my images, I can do that. Then I can choose whether or not every single markup in my page range is going to be flattened, depending on the category that's chosen. Or I can exclude filtered ones. So if I have my markups list at the bottom open and I use the filter buttons, I can filter certain markups and exclude them if I want to. Or I can flatten currently selected markups. And that's why I selected a portion of my markups because I can just flatten those by using the currently selected markups option. Now the settings at the bottom here are also very important. Notably the first one is allow markup recovery, which is the same thing as unflattening. 
That's why it's in parentheses. And the unflatten button is also here in this dialog. This is the slowest way to get here. So like I said, you can activate it by going to document and unflatten, or you can add that tool anywhere you'd like. So we're going to allow markup recovery to see what it's like. If you do not allow markup recovery, it's very similar to quick flattening. You are flattening almost indefinitely forever, especially when you save your file. The only way to undo a flatten that does not have markup recovery attached to it is to use the undo key before you save your file. So just keep that in mind. Flattening is a very particular tool. Then we can flatten our markups to a specific layer. We can actually choose this and then choose any of our existing layers in the drawing. It's actually a really interesting thing that we can then toggle with flattening. Not very common, but it can be done. We can show properties in a pop-up and flatten capture media as an attachment, meaning that if you associate images to your markups with the capture tool, you can right click on a markup and then select capture, then any of that capture media will be flattened as an attachment instead of being part of the active markup, which makes a lot of sense because if you flatten a markup with a capture, where does the capture go? And this is basically is our answer. That capture media will become an attachment that can be retrieved and downloaded and basically re retrieved from the PDF whenever you need to. And like you can see here, every time you turn any of these on, we have some options that now appear. So let's look at the options for flatten the layer. We can essentially leave markups on an existing layer or overlay text. And you guys can experiment with these settings here. And when you turn on overlay text, you can then choose fonts and font sizes and colors and different things. So experiment with that and you guys tell me how that goes. And you can see here that the anchor for this can be chosen here. So lots of interesting settings here. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Let's go to the options for show properties and pop up and see what we have. So basically the property data can be turned on here and this is data that we see in our markups list so the different columns that we have in that markups list can now be chosen and this includes all of our custom columns as well so at the bottom here we can see all the custom columns that i created such as the material column and all these cost analysis ones etc cetera, etc cetera. so very interesting stuff we're not going to do that either let's look into our options for the flattened capture media as attachment and see what we can modify we can attach media as linked files so that way the files are actually linked to the PDF and not necessarily attachments. So that could be useful. And we can give it a title for basically all of the different captures. The padding for that can be uh, increased or decreased. The page size can be chosen here by basically these um, more common page sizes. So can't choose every single page size or customize it to your liking, but this is close enough. So. You can do that. Set it to portrait or landscape for the page's orientation. Set your margins right here so you can say how far you want the margins to be. I don't really know why the top margin is different from the others. It's a bit odd. I'm going to change that <laughs> to uh, 0.5 as well. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK as well. So at least my settings are ready when I need to use any of these options. For now, I'm not going to worry about these. These are pretty optional and I haven't really used them for most of my clients, but they are there if you have specific needs and want to do some very particular things. Now we are ready. Markup recovery is allowed. Only the selected markups are going to be flattened. But if I still leave it that only our images are being flattened, then those markups there will not be flattened because I basically don't have any images in my selection. Let's test that right now and see what happens. So I'm just going to click on flatten. Program just basically refresh itself. And we can check and see if anything got flattened by basically checking our markups list and seeing if a markup disappeared. We have quite a few markups here. So instead, I'm just going to check and see those markups that I selected here. And look at that. They are all markups. They have not been flattened. We can still select them. Let's make sure that our images did not get flattened. No, they didn't. So we have an image here. And we have basically, this is already flattened to the drawing. So this one we can't really touch. Um, so yes, our images did not get flattened because they were not part of that current selection. So that's how those settings interact with each other. Let's do this one more time. I'm going to select those markups, click on my flatten tool. And this time I'm going to basically turn on everything. So every markup that is available in Bluebeam Review is now ready to go. I'm just going to do the currently selected ones so that we can test them and not flatten every single markup. And then we'll talk about some best practices. So I think we're ready. We have a lot of markup recovery ready to go. I'm going to click on flatten. Now the program loads a bit. And now I cannot click on these. I can't select them. They are part of the page. They are stuck to it just like if I was to take a uh, little confetti and glue it to a piece of paper. So the confetti is our markups and the glue is the flattening por portion. So. 
And basically that's it. Now, of course, I do want to unflatten these markups because I do use them for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go to document and unflatten. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to unflatten markups that are part of specific layers? That's quite nice. So in this case, I'll just select all because I could make sure that I select ones that are not part of a layer. And I know that most of these markups that I flattened are part of the my markups layer. This is why these, uh, this is the only layer in this list. If I had flattened other markups and allowed markup recovery, other markups that are part of other layers, then those layers will show up in this list and then I can choose them. So that's actually a really nice thing about unflattening. All right, I'm going to unflatten them. Now let's wait for it to load. And there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have our markups back, ready to be selected. There's a capture right here associated with this markup. That's quite nice. I can now see that we have our logo attached to it. Isn't that cool? So everything is back to normal. Basically, when you flatten something review and you allow for markup recovery, Bluebeam Review remembers that the markup basically was a markup, keeps its data intact, but does make it stick to the page. So it is really, really cool. Now, some best practices are the following. When you're going to flatten, you don't necessarily want to allow for markup recovery if you're going to sign something after you flatten and submit it to a city for review. And the reason why is because you don't want people to go to the flatten dialog and just click on unflatten. They'll be able to unflatten your work. They can make changes to it. It may break the document a bit, etc., etc. Now, flattening is not available after you sign, but it is still a good idea to flatten your markups before you submit them or share them with somebody. The reason why is because not everybody is using Bluebeam Review, and when you open up a PDF in a web browser, markups created in Bluebeam Review and other PDF programs that are not flattened and still regular markups that can be moved around and modified are not necessarily detectable and recognizable by web browsers and other PDF programs. So if you want all of your markups to be visible and you want them to display properly, flatten them before you share them with someone, especially if you don't expect there to be any more changes to them. A great practice is you can basically have a working copy with markups that are not flattened whatsoever, and then copy the file and have that file prepared for the submittal. So you would flatten your markups, sign it. If you don't need to sign it, you can just flatten your markups and you are good to go. And that is essentially how we can flatten our documents in many different ways. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on flattening in Bluebeam Review. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.